the law of attraction is a philosophy that believes that positive thoughts bring positive things into a person's life. What belongs to me will simply find me. The success and happiness I seek is also seeking me. And I now release any blocks that are standing between us. Hello, this is Sandra Hart at Life Over 60. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are in my community, welcome back. I'm so glad you decided to click on this conversation today. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you'll think about subscribing and joining this great community that we have here. Today, I'm going to tell you how the law of attraction has really changed my life several times. Once when I was younger, uh, once when I was 50 years old and just not too long ago. Uh, three things that have happened that have put my life in the direction of where I am today. Now, what is the law of attraction? Well, the law of attraction is thinking whatever your thoughts are, that is what you draw to yourself and to your life. If you have negative thoughts, Perhaps you're bringing negative things into your life, negative circumstances into your life. Uh, like I say, if, if, be careful what you wish for. Well, that's kind of what the law of attraction is. Thinking positive things will bring positive events into your life. Now, there's certain things that you can do, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about those later. But the first thing that I can tell you about my life is that I can remember growing up in Ohio in a middle-class family. I would lie awake at night and listen to the radio station coming from New York, William B. Williams, and I would dream about coming to New York. I wanted to be an actress. I would dream about that, and I had never given up that dream, even when I was in college, because during the summer I worked as a waitress at a seafood restaurant, and I would save my money so... I was able eventually, on my own, to be able to go to New York to study acting. Who would have thought, as a young teenager, with parents that really could not afford to support me in New York and to get me there, that I would eventually be able to manifest that dream because I felt so positive about it and I wanted it so desperately. I Whatever people would say to me, say, oh, you can't do that. I didn't even listen to them because I knew it's what I wanted to do. I eventually wound up being on Romper Room, so I wasn't an actress in New York, but I was able to manifest part of my entertainment desire through Romper Room. The second thing that happened to me was that when I was 50 years old. That dream that I had as a five-year-old, as a young teenager of being an actress in New York on the stage, for years I would picture myself on a Broadway stage holding a bouquet of roses in my arms. For years, even though Things happened to me in my life. I wasn't in New York. I was living somewhere else. I was married with three children. I was widowed with three children. Even though all of those things happened to me, people probably would have said, that's never going to happen to you, Sandra. Give it up. Forget about it. Don't do it. Well, when I was 50 years old, that dream that I had all those years finally came true. I was standing on a stage in New York City several times, quite a few times, holding a bouquet of roses or flowers in my arms and giving my bows. I manifested that positive dream 
and I never gave it up. And it happened to me. It didn't happen in the time frame that I thought it might happen, but it happened to me. And it did change my life because it took my life in a completely different direction. And I'm going to save the last thing that happened to me at the end of this video. But there are things to do if you want positive things to happen into your life. The first thing you really have to do is to eliminate the negativity. And how many times have we talked about this? But try to get yourself into a positive frame, a positive mindset. No matter what is going on around you in your life, try to stay positive and find one little ray of positivity in your life and keep that positivity going all day long. And the way you can do that and that it helps is the second thing I'm going to tell you to do. Try to keep a gratitude journal. Every day what I do, I do spend at least five minutes, whether it's in the morning, at night, or if I have a break during the day, sitting down and I will write down the things that I am grateful for today. It, it takes less than five minutes. Just say, I'm grateful for this cup of coffee. I'm, I'm grateful for the sunshine today. I am so grateful to be here today. Simple things. Just be grateful that you are here. And that's the second thing that is really so important. And then the third thing that we have to do is to meditate, to pray for positive things to happen into your life. And you know that it's not always your plan, but it's God's plan on his time frame that things happen to you. But if you are positive and you believe it's good for you and you believe that all the things can eventually be in place to make it happen, then do that. Meditate. Soul search. It doesn't take long. Five minutes, 15 minutes every day. Take that moment because it will also be a happier person because you'll be more centered and you'll be more grounded in your day. Love yourself. Love yourself. Regardless of what you have done in the past, regardless of things that you are carrying guilt about, regardless of, of, of whatever it is, love yourself. Self-love is so important to finding happiness in this life and being able to pursue your dream. You have to have self-love. Self-love brings self-confidence and self-esteem. So that is probably one, one of the really important things that you have to do is self-love. The next thing to do, you don't have to wish for a McMansion right away. You can wish for it later on, but start with small things. Just small things in your life. When you go to the library, say, I am positive because I know that I'm going to be here and I'm going to find the perfect book that will help me, the per perfect book to read. Just small things in your life. Uh, going out today, say, I know I don't have to take an umbrella with me because I know I, I'm going to be good. When you get in the car, I know I'm going to be safe. Just start out with small things. I know I'm going to connect today with someone that I can make happy, whether it's a cashier, a salesperson, someone on the street walking their dog and you say hi to them. Just make that small, positive connection with someone that gives you that power of attraction. And then later on, when you feel like you have really mastered all of these things I've talked about, then you have to take action on it. You have to take action. I had to take action when I was a young girl by working and saving my money so that I could go to New York. I couldn't just sit there and have a genie pick me up from Ohio <laughs> and take me to New York and land me into an apartment. That's not possible. So you have to take action on whatever positive thing that you want to attract in your life, whether it's a job, a new home, a, a, a 
significant other, a partner, health, whatever it is you want to bring into your life. You have to take action by taking care of yourself, by maybe going on a dating site, by joining a church while you socialize with people, or by starting to look at real estate, starting to think downsize, starting to clear your house out so that when you downsize, you'll be able to do it better. So you have to take action. All of these just simple things, I think I gave you about five, I'm not too sure, maybe four or five, are really important. Now, the last thing I'm going to tell you how the law of attraction came into my life. Arthur and I lived down here part-time for since 1997. We were here only for about three months. One day we were walking and we came across this new building that was beautiful. It was a gorgeous building with a group of townhouses. And it said open house. So we went in and looked at the apartment. It was lovely, but too expensive. It was something that we really, at that time in our lives, couldn't afford or what weren't even thinking about. And then as I was leaving, I looked across the pool and I saw this beautiful townhouse, three stories. It had a bougainvillea that went up two stories high. It was so pretty, purple blossoms. And this beautiful winding staircase that went up I didn't know where, but I figured there probably was a garden up there somewhere. But I looked at that, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to live in a place like that? It just seemed impossible at the time for us. Well, fast forward. Arthur was riding his bike about four or five years later, saw a for sale sign in front of the building, called me. I ran down. We went in and went through the apartment and you know what? It was the very same apartment that I had looked at and dreamed about and never forgot about. And that's where I am today. Arthur and I at that time were able to buy this apartment. So the power of manifestation led me to New York, led me to Broadway and off-Broadway, and it also led me to my dream home. In retirement. It definitely has changed my life. And as I've said in so many of my videos, if I can do it, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. But you do have to believe. The last thing I want you to do today is to repeat this Maybe write it down and put it on a mirror somewhere. Put it on your refrigerator. I attract. What belongs to me will simply find me. The success and happiness that I seek is also seeking me. And I now release any blocks that are standing between us. Thank you for joining me for this conversation today and use the power of attraction by doing something wonderful for yourself today. Do something very kind to someone who crosses your path. And of course, let's all put out positive vibrations for the world that we're living in today. Thank you. I love each and every one of you and I can't wait to see you again in my next video. Take care.